we spent some time talking about some of the new products we're building and stuff here, right? So every so often we come across use cases that can actually have social impact. It's not purely commercially driven, right? And I'm very fortunate in the sense that I'd like to share one such story today. First and foremost, I'd like to introduce Alex Vanden Hever. Hi, Alex. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Alex flew in from South Africa this morning, right? And he flew in just to tell us about like, you know, what we are doing in terms of a new partnership we're putting together. So Alex, why don't you take over and why don't sure. you talk us through what you do? Thank you, man. Th thanks so much. Thank you for having me and thank you for coming to listen. So I represent the Tracker Academy. We're an NGO based in South Africa. We train professional wildlife trackers who most of them are unemployed, rural people living close in villages close to big national parks. And we, we put them through a formally accredited tracker training program and then we deploy them into jobs in, co in the conservation industry. We're the first formally accredited tracker training institute in Africa. And our, over the last 13 years that we've been in existence, we've trained 250 trackers, of which 95% are now in permanent conservation jobs. So uh, we are using tracking for social good. We are using tracking as a, as a technique to, pr to save animals, to monitor wildlife, and so on. So, if I could carry on, let me give you a bit of background as to what tracking is. Tracking is ostensibly, ostensibly the study of all signs left behind by animals. Tracking was born in Africa. We don't know exactly, but the earliest uh, signs of, of when it started was about 25,000 years ago. Um, and interestingly, there are two components to tracking. The first is what we call the track and sign identification or track and sign interpretation. That's the study of every single species from an insect to an elephant sign. Any, its footprints, any signs that it leaves behind, the, the, the bones, the scent marks, the droppings, the, the, the feathers, anything that gets left behind falls into that component and that's highly analytical and it requires a, a discerning mindset to do, do, do well in that component. And if tracking were a language, that would be your ABC, that would be your alphabet. The second component is what we call the trailing, that's the following of an animal's trail like a lion until you eventually find that animal. And that's interesting because that requires a much more creative, more in innovative mindset. To, uh, and and in, in great contrast to the track and sign. So what we would like to, and so on the board, on the overhead there are some images. The one on the left is, is a trail left behind by a lion walking through a grass um, that had, had walked through 10 minutes before. We were following that lion trail. And then the rest are all some of the signs I alluded to earlier. And that is what we'd like to, well, I'd like to talk to you about today. And that's what's very exciting about our new partnership with HPE. So we have created an app which seeks to identify to a higher level of confidence what signs belong to what animals. But it wasn't easy. Um, I've, I've, I've walked a long road. It's been seven years. I um, applied for an, a grant from the AI from, for Earth, a Microsoft grant, and in two years, over a pair of two years, we were able, not able to make any ground. Then I went to Deloitte Consulting, again, over a period of two to three years, weren't able to make any significant ground. And then I, I was introduced to an independent contractor, a machine learning expert, a South African living in Bosnia, and he did, and we got quite far with him until he decided to go and become a yoga teacher. And, <laughs> and, then, and then I was out of, I was out of luck um, until uh, I met Moani and his team at HP. And, and the HP Labs and the Esmeral team, together with the team at Aruba, and in just a few weeks, they were able to, with a combination of five machine learning uh, models, able to get it right. The other challenges here is that the master trackers, and this is something I, I failed to mention at the beginning, masters, the master trackers in the field of tr traditional skills of tracking in Africa are disappearing fast. We believe we've lost 90% of the traditional skills of tracking in Africa over the last 60 years because of the, the, le the legacy of apartheid, moving people away from their natural places of birth, and of course the worldwide trend of uh, urbanization. And so to find the right people 
to collect data that is accurate to train the machine has been one of the, the, the challenges. So you've got an issue of skill sets there, but we, Tracker Academy fortunately employs the last three master trackers in South Africa, and together with, with, with uh, the HP team, we've been able to get, we've been able to overcome most of those challenges. Alex, this is fascinating. I mean, you're collecting a whole bunch of data, you're basically processing the data, and you're trying to augment humans. That's the way I would interpret what you just said, right? Yes. That's fascinating. That's, that's, that's exactly right. You know, tracking is, there's, there are papers that have been published, tracking may be the origin of science. It's the first time, and you alluded to it earlier in your presentation, it's the first time that humans made use of deductive reasoning. And we've got a case now of the ancient, an ancient art meeting science coming together for the, for, the, for the benefit of social good in Africa and, of course, the protection of wild animals. But what's more important uh, for me to mention, or equally as important for me to mention, is some of the use cases, Moen, if you, if you would. If you yeah, would. please. Mm. This would be fascinating. So a lot of people say, well, why are you doing this? Are you not going to be taking the jobs away from the trackers? No. We, the idea is to shine a spotlight on, these, on this ancient craft and to, to, to generate to raise the profile of tracking, to generate energy around indig indigenous African knowledge for the benefit of wildlife conservation. This app, once it gets to a 90% and above confidence in terms of the ad correct identification of signs, will be, be an augmentation to research. It will be a, a master tracker in the pocket of a, of a scientist conducting st studies in the field, in, obviously in the environmental space. We've done research in the, in the US where up to 60% of the data collected by scientists who are not trained as tracker uh, uh, are making errors, fundamental errors in their data collection. So that's the one use case. The other is the standard monitoring of animals. We will be able to tell one rhino's footprint from another. And as some of you may know that rhinos are, in, are on serious jeopardy at the moment. Kruger National Park has gone from 12,000 rhino to 1,800 in the last decade. And we want to be able to, uh, to show that, this, that using machine learning, we can identify and we can uh, um, individual species, we can monitor them um, in ways that was never possible to begin with. And then thirdly, you've, I, I'm sure any of you who's interested in nature and takes walks in parks and so on wouldn't mind a device in your pocket that can tell you about all the marks on the ground. And, and, and yes, it's, it's, we are building this in an African context, but when we get it right, there's no reason why we can't roll out a similar app for North America and, and the rest of the world. Alex, this is fascinating, right? If I have to paraphrase what I just heard from you, there were two parts of tracking. One is identifying the animal marks. Second is actually tracing the animal, right? And you're automating the, the, the tracking part of things. Correct, right? yes. How real is this? <laughs> how, how real is it? Yeah, how far have you been able to push the limits? Well, we, we, um, we've got to the, the uh, let me just go on here. At, at training the machine learning uh, models we've used to giving it 800 to 1,000 uh, examples of one species, say, for example, lion, the, the algorithm has got to about a 90% accuracy. We need to, we would like to get a, a beyond 90 to probably 98 or 99%. And what we believe is we'll probably have to go to from 1,000 to 10,000. But what's interesting here is that it took the team less than 15 minutes to set up, this, uh, set up the platform, which was unbelievable considering the eight-year history I'd, I, I described to you earlier. Mm. Oh, this is fascinating. I have to actually go and try out the app now. So, <laughs> Alex, one more question, right? What's your vision? Where do you want to take this next? So I, I want to show that, as I alluded to earlier, that, that this ancient art, that technology can help this ancient art prevent it from completely disappearing, shine a spotlight on ancient indigenous knowledge in Africa, and, give, and, and use technology for, for social good to, do, to monitor animals and to involve people, especially rural unemployed people in Africa, often poor without jobs, and get them involved in, in the collection of data to, to develop the app to its completion. This is fascinating, Alex. Thank so, you. First of all, thank you for making the trip here. I would love to like, you know, be part of this collaboration and see how we as HPE can help. Quite honestly, I think, folks, this has been a really humbling experience over the last six, eight weeks that we've actually collaborated here, where again, we have Alex on stage and we have some folks from the Esmeral team participating here. But this was in some sense a group effort. We got introduced to Alex through Dobius Lars and the Aruba team. Uh, we have folks from Hewlett-Packard Labs who have been spending a lot of time building these models, training the models and stuff. 
would love to see more of these collaborations. And I'm truly excited about like, you know, digitizing nature's sign language. Right? Thank you. Any last thoughts, Alex? No, that's good. I just wanted to thank you all for, for being in support of this, and let's hope we can get it over the line. Perfect. Yeah. Thank, thank you so, you so much. much once again. Right.